Hi guys, I just got back in from filming a quick little outfit video outside and I wanted to turn on my vlogging camera and it speaks you all just because I haven't checked in for a little while so I thought it would be fun to show you what I've been up to, some of the new pieces that I am starting now autumn is finally properly in full swing and also some of the other little upkeep kind of things I do when the season changes. So now almost every day it's like about 23 degrees in Italy. There have been some cooler days but that has meant that I've brought out a lot of my autumnal knits and blazers uh, just like this one because it's one of my favourite times of year for dressing I adore anything sort of layered. I love the opportunity to mix a lot of different fibres so that's why I went out today and I was filming a quick little reel <laughs> taking this top from summer to autumn. You will see that if you are somebody who follows me over on Instagram and now I am kind of in a sort of really lazy mood. I sort of want to mooch around, um, I don't want to finish any of my works in progress. I kind of feel like uh, overcome with a desire to cast on something new. And I know that's really bad, uh, there have been periods in my life when I've tried to be a more monogamous knitter, but I'm sort of giving up on that at the moment because there are so many projects that are really inspiring to me now that we've come into the autumn season that I feel like it would be a shame to kind of slog through certain things just for the sake of getting them done. I will have things done next week because I'm planning to do a what I made in August and September video um, and I'm very excited to show you some bits that will be ready for that. But for this week, I feel like I'm just going to mooch around and do a little bit of mending as well because part of what I always think about when we go from one season to another is that I have certain pieces that require just a little bit of maintenance to keep them looking at their kind of best. And a couple of these jumpers that I'm going to do some very simple repairs and fixes to are ones that many of you will be familiar with if you have been following me for a while. Um, the Moby sweater, for example, is one of my absolute favourite jumpers. But there are just a few things that I want to change to some of these knits to get them looking extra polished and perfect as we go into the colder months. Now, before I get started with all my mending, I'll just put the camera down and show you this cute outfit that I was wearing today. Now, this is a vintage wool and cashmere blazer. Um, I kind of like to roll the sleeves up on this because it is very thin. I feel like that gives it an even more retro kind of like 1980s, 1990s vibe. And it's gorgeous tweed. Um, a little bit of cashmere in it just makes it extra smooth and lovely to wear. Of course, my tonight top underneath, brown belt and kind of baggy like workwear almost trousers from COS. These are really great. They're just the cotton ones, but I like the fact that I can wear them when it isn't really, really cold. So yeah, this is like a quintessential autumn outfit for me. I love blazers. I love matching my belt and my bag. There's something just really like, ah, uh, dressed up and kind of cool about that. And I'm so happy to be wearing my knits. Every single day, I don't have to hold back anymore. We are in sweater weather season. One of the pieces that I have been working on to repair, as I mentioned earlier, is the Moby sweater. And I will add in a few clips for you so you can see what I mean when I say that there's something just not quite perfect about this. Now, this Moby sweater is knit up in Drops Lima and Drops Alpaca Silk, which is a really gorgeous combination that creates a beautiful kind of mild effect that I think really brings out all of the texture in this beautiful piece. But if you look very closely, now I am being really fussy and nitpicky here, 
but if you look really really closely you will see that the collar is a little bit wonky i mean the most slight amount of wonk but still this is something that when i put it on i can't help but notice it and it does make me just a little bit irritable so i know that this will be quite a simple fix but it does fill me with kind of apprehension and dread um i chopped off my collar as you can see here and once i had most of that collar off i was able to kind of rip it all back and kind of just pull on the yarn to unravel it all and i was just left with a lot of kind of tufty pieces and some pretty exaggerated holes where the collar had previously been so now what I've done to update you on my progress is I have picked up the stitches as you will see in this little clip and I have just started to recast on the collar in a way that looks a little bit straighter and a little bit less wonky. So far if you look closely I feel like that does look quite a bit straighter and it's probably as good as it's going to get, I mean, without actually damaging this beautiful jumper, because I am a little bit worried if I unravel it again, I am going to, I don't know, mess up some of this gorgeous cable detail. However, I am pretty happy with the way that this is looking, because something I've been thinking about quite a lot recently is that divide between people who are process or project knitters. When I first started knitting quite a few years ago now, I was definitely more of a process knitter. I was just so kind of enamoured and in awe of how you can actually make, you know, knitted garments just with the simple act of knitting. So everything was amazing to me. Everything I created was like, wow, this is so special that I've actually managed to create anything at all. Now that I have a little bit more experience, I still absolutely adore the process of knitting up a garment, but I am a lot more fussy and particular about the finish, the fit, and the overall, I don't know, feel of a garment, because I view them more as items of clothing that I'm going to wear, rather than just beautiful activities for me to enjoy as I knit them up. Now part of this also comes from the fact that I have always been quite in love with sort of clothing and styling different outfits um, but the beauty of knitting to me when I kind of found the online knitting community was the fact that I found a space that didn't feel so fast and so consumerist in comparison to a lot of the other kind of ready to wear online spaces. I love the fact that knitting is much more about uh, thinking about the process of making something, the design details, the fibres and their particular sort of characteristics and why they might be good for certain outfits. So now that I focus a lot of my energy into styling things the way I want, I have kind of married those two things that I really, really love which is creating outfits that allow me to express myself, but also using my beloved knitted items that I have spent hours and hours making. Um, however, that does mean I am extra, extra fussy. <laughs> it's a few hours later and I have had a restful time swatching up a few different yarns and also doing a few rounds on my Moby collar. And the biggest accomplishment of the last few hours is that I did swatch up this Heil Holtz, I believe that's how you say it, hand sparks garn. Um, so this is just a swatch of moss stitch in this beautiful rustic Danish yarn. This is a special yarn that I got for my birthday when we went on our trip to Copenhagen. So I've been saving it for the sort of perfect project. And I feel like it will work really well in a more textured garment just because the yarn itself does have a lot of kind of grey that shows through and just gives it a lot of like texture and a kind of rustic quality that I think looks really good when you are doing um, different stitches rather than just stockinette. However, I'm not completely sold yet on making my Beatrix cardigan in this. 
I am uh, considering, and I really shouldn't because I do have enough yarn, I'm considering popping to my local yarn shop tomorrow morning because when I first looked at the Beatrix cardigan, I had this vision of knitting it up in a rich chocolate brown just because I feel like that might make it the perfect layering piece with a lot of my other outfits. I can imagine it working with so many different things and I think like a thick, maybe pear gint or a kind of toothy wool could work really really well. Just because this might be a touch too light for it being that kind of layering jacket cardigan that I had in mind. But I am going to think about it, I'm going to reflect, I'm going to see if I can uh, not be taken in by the temptation of buying more yarn. So I am trying to bust some of my stash, I don't really need more yarn, I should be using what I have. But sometimes you just have a vision, and I am also telling myself it's better to knit something that I know I'm going to wear again and again and again rather than just forcing myself to use up yarn, especially a yarn that's this special. I just made the mistake of hopping onto Instagram and adding something new to the mix that's going to make me even more indecisive. This has just dropped, it's not out yet for another week, but it has been posted on Petite Knit's website and the yarn quantities are up. This also uses a Hjalholtz yarn, it's one of their new ones, but it is the same weight as the Hand Darks yarn that I have. And this is the Dagmar jacket or cardigan. It looks so cute and this creamy colour I think will be the, oh my colour's gone weird, this creamy shade will be the perfect match for my Hjalholtz cream yarn which I didn't mean for this to happen, but it will necessitate a trip to my yarn shop tomorrow so I can get that chocolate brown yarn for my Beatrix cardigan. Before I show you all my yarn haul that I did, I want to check in and show you the progress that I've made on my Moby sweater collar. I finished knitting all of the ribbing and um, folded it over and sewed it in place. I'm so much happier with how this is lying now. If you have a look, you can see that all of the lines just seem a lot straighter on the front and at the sides. I feel like my previous mistake was probably just attaching the collar in when I'd finished it in a slightly wonky way and maybe accidentally skipping a couple of stitches. But yeah, here it is, it's finished. I also gave my Moby sweater a wash over the weekend and debobbled it a little bit so it is looking extra kind of fitted. Um, it definitely gets a little bit tighter when I've just washed it but I'm really happy with the way that this is looking now and I feel like the collar is just looking that little bit extra more kind of polished so I'm really looking forward to wearing this. It's a few days later, but I'm very happy to report that I did manage to go to my local yarn shop and get the goods. I went to Fjordilana, which you can see down there, that's the name. They are my closest local yarn shop and the lady in there is so lovely and helpful. When I was looking around, I was quite interested in some of the San Nesgarn op options. However, I just had to go for this really gorgeous Pura Lana Ecological from Sessia. This is an Italian brand that I've never actually tried before, but I'm really looking forward to testing out. Now, this is called Ecological Wool, I believe, on the website. And it is a blend of 50% virgin wool and 50% alpaca. So that does give it extra softness and kind of that fuzzy sort of sheen to it if you look quite closely, including some sort of tufts of alpaca. But yeah, I was immediately like drawn to this as soon as I walked into the shop. And I feel like this might be quite similar to something like a drops lemur but a slightly more luxurious and kind of fancy version of something like that, which I'm really, really thrilled about trying because I do love Drops Lima, especially held with other things. Now, I was contemplating using this 
just on its own. However, I spotted nearby the gorgeous Vivian Mohair, also from Cessia, and I just couldn't resist. <laughs> Now, these are not completely the same shade, but my thought was that if I hold this, because it's such a dark base, together with this, this would just lend it a little bit more kind of redness, which I quite like at the moment, because I like my browns to lean a little bit more towards burgundy. I feel like that complements a lot of the colours that I really enjoy wearing. I'll dump it all out so you can see all of this beautiful yarn. I did get quite a fair few balls of each. I believe I got a total of 14 of the Pura Lana, which is gorgeous. And I will, if I enjoy this, definitely try and make a jumper in a single strand of this just to test it out because I'm a real fan of blends of alpaca and wool. I find that you get all of the softness of alpaca with some of the structure of wool. And yeah, I just really enjoy this type of yarn. Now, the Vivian Mohair, I have to just speak about this beautiful yarn for a minute because I have tried a fair few mohairs in my life. I really enjoy a fuzzy second strand, but this, I mean, look at the tufty fuzziness that is coming off that. This may actually be one of the softest. It is a made in Italy yarn and it's just so incredibly luscious and snuggly. No itch at all. I mean, I've held this to my neck and I would say it compares to something like a KFO um, soft silk mohair, but it may be actually even softer. Price-wise, it is very similar to the Knitting for Olive as well, but if you're looking to try out an Italian brand, maybe you're one of my viewers that lives in Italy, or someone who has access to this Italian brand, give this Vivian Mohair a look um, and tell me what you think, because I reckon this is one of the softest mohairs currently on the market. Now I got quite a fair few balls of these. I think I got a total of 14 of the ecological wool and I think it was about eight of this one. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a special project and a little bit of an investment project for me. But because this pattern is so extremely beautiful and detailed and will probably take me quite a while, I felt like it was worth the splurge. And also it is kind of gift to myself because my channel just this last week has hit 10,000 subscribers. Um, of course, this is all thanks to you guys who watch along. Thank you so incredibly much. I can't believe there are 10,000 of you who actually want to watch me. And yeah, I'm just so excited about everything to come. I have so many ideas for the next few months that I'm hoping I'm going to be able to have the time to pull off. The other thing I did do to treat myself as a special memento along with this lovely yarn, which, ah, look at it on camera, it's going to be so good, is I popped into a very fancy shop in the middle of Milan that I have been dying to have an excuse to go into. I would never normally have a reason or a sort of, yeah, not desire, I've wanted to go in, but I would normally never have a reason to go into somewhere so fancy. It is a French brand, um, but they have a little branch in Milan. And look how cute the bag is. I just wanted to get myself a very special memento that I could keep in my bag that would remind me of my hard work and the wonderful accomplishment of reaching 10K on my YouTube channel. And I settled for getting myself a little comb. Again, this is like an extravagant, um, like fancy lady purchase for me. So that is the little velvet pouch that it comes in. So this is the comb and it's tortoiseshell, which I really, really love. And on the back, I just got my little initials um, stamped into it, which they offer for free when you buy anything in the shop. And yeah, it's really gorgeous. 
whenever I go to use this now, I just, it makes me really happy. It's like one of those silly things. Does anybody need a fancy comb with their initials on it? No, they don't. But I would never buy this for any other reason than pure treating myself. And I hope to kind of organise and get sorted an episode to celebrate 10k with you all. Um, I would love to know what your suggestions would be of how you'd want to do that. I could do kind of a Q&A or um, yeah, just whatever you think would be fun for that. I would love to know what you think. Thank you so much again for watching and following along with this channel. It is always so much fun to put these together and to sit down and speak with you all. And I can't believe that I finally hit this milestone. Um, I hope to see you again very, very soon and happy knitting. Bye.